FX's new cartoon, Little Demon, showcases a female antichrist and a lovable, murderous devil. As we take a look at how this show and others like it have bridged the gap for parents and children to laugh at sinful practices and wicked comedy. Stay with us as we look at these and other stories on the 511 News. Welcome back to the 511 News. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, we're going to be looking at none other than the new comedy by FX that is going to be streaming on Hulu regarding the little demon that is a character that is literally from a love affair of one woman with Satan himself, played by none other than Danny DeVito. And one of the things that we wanted to talk about is the idea that over and over again on a number of TV shows, whether it's Netflix or Fox's Lucifer, where Satan has become some of what of a lovable figure. Even Adam Sandler's Little Nicky that came out a number of years ago had Satan as a lovable figure that is the one ultimately giving the punishment to Hitler in the form of some, let's just say, some really weird ways. But nonetheless, these shows prove over and over again that they want to lighten the load and show that Satan isn't so bad of a guy. In fact, that is what the rapper Jay-Z actually sang in his song Lucifer, that he had a righteous cause for sinning. Of course, Jay-Z, who can be seen with none other than Satanist Aleister Crowley's maxim, do what thou wilt, blazon across his chest. And this is just what we should expect in a culture that is not only a culture of death, one that pushes for the murder of innocent babies in the womb, but also from a culture that seems to be hitting the turbo when it comes to the end times events and just ultimately getting people ready for the acceptance of the Antichrist, whether that be from a liberal or conservative viewpoint. It seems that both sides, thinking that they're fighting against each other, are really working towards the same ultimate goal of finding that one Antichrist will specifically get us ready to accept this one dictator of one religion, of one economy, that will actually take place according to Scripture, because we can know all of the things that were promised of Jesus' first coming, of what it would look like, how he would live, how he would die, the miracles he would perform, and how he would even resurrect, and all of those things coming to pass— We also know that, guess what, those things where it mentions the end times, some of the false religion, the false systems, the end times, I guess you would say hallmarks or birthmarks that are warned about both in 1 and 2 Timothy, but 1 Timothy chapter 4 are all going to take place. We can trust that they're going to happen because, guess what, Jesus said it, and when Jesus says it, it's always true. So, What we want to look at today is not only where this seemingly has been pushing this idea that Satan is not so bad before it might have been put him in a pitchfork and, you know, a nice little tail and have him allow people to have three wishes or some form of a genie or whatever people are trying to do and act like it's not so big of a deal, not realizing that he is waging war against you, that he wants your soul to be damned. And the Bible is really clear that we need to be sober and vigilant. We need to be sober-minded. We need to be paying attention. We need to be vigilant because our adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, and he makes himself even as an angel of light. And in this new show, Little Demon, I'm going to read right here from the description so you can get uh, kind of an idea of what it's about. Little Demon FX animated horror features, frontal nudity, and expletives. Quote, we're going to keep going for it, says co-creator. Quote, we are going to keep going for it until we are told no. Kirshner told reporters today during FX's television critics tour panel. Quote, we cut a bunch of stuff out, oddly enough. And Danny DeVito, who plays the devil, said this. I have a quest as the devil. I met a beautiful woman. 
and I have a gorgeous antichrist daughter who I love and want to be with. I get to play all the devilish things I've had in my career, and this also gives me a family I care about. Isn't that exactly what Jesus said as well when it comes to even the Gentiles, they love their own. And for us believers, we should be taking care of our own, and we should be far more than simply doing that, but even loving our enemies. And this show is quite graphic. In fact, we're going to show you parts of the trailer so that you can see just a little bit of what this whole thing is all about. Mom, get in! There's no more putting this off. Your dad is the devil and you're the antichrist. I'm supposed to accept that you had sex with Satan or anyone? Ah. Please allow me to introduce myself. Come to your father, Damien. Oh, you're a girl. The future is female. And as you can see, they actually played none other than the song Sympathy for the Devil in the very intro that was originally performed by Rolling Stones, where they talk about and sing about in that song, washing their hands clean of what <laughs> Pontius Pilate, washing his hands clean concerning uh, Jesus and what he would do ultimately on the cross. And I believe when you read that song, is the same, or read the lyrics to that song, is the same thing this show is using as the introduction or as the trailer uh, is pointing to the same thing. That song is obviously about Satan. That's why you're supposed to have sympathy for him. But we are not supposed to have sympathy for the devil. We are not supposed to bring a railing accusation against him, but rather say, the Lord rebuke you. But it's also something that we don't point and say the devil is behind every rock. But when we see Satan's fingerprint, when we see his hand in something, we do need to recognize it and call it out and expose it. And when they simply use comedy as a means over and over again to push ideology, we don't just look back and say, oh, that's just people being crazy. That's just people being legalistic. No, there's a reality going on. And the people behind this, whether they know it or not, and some of which we're going to examine some of their other work a little bit later in this episode, but whether they know it or not, they are part of of the prince of the power of the air, and they are sons of disobedience and daughters of disobedience who are being worked through. Satan is using them to make himself look much more palatable, that he's not such a bad guy, or as the Gnostics would teach, that he's simply trying to give you knowledge or gnosis. Guys, this is not something that is simply small. It's not something minute but it's something that is prevalent. In fact, here is Danny DeVito talking about the role and once again, making Satan seem like not so much a bad guy. Satan yeah. is like very, very, um, usually uh, portrayed in you know, many, many ways. He's got many, many faces. And I feel like um, uh, a lot of times he's been maligned. I mean, he's really a nice guy. Deep down inside, he's really a good guy. I think one, my, one of my uh, 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 big ones is... Uh, you know, uh, the fact that, uh, you know, Satan is, uh, you know, is very bold in terms of who he murders. He murders a lot of people. And uh, just at, in, in a, on a random, uh, you know, one random day, I would just go out and murder. It doesn't matter your, let me give you a hint. It doesn't matter how old you are for, for me to be able to just, you know, take you out. So, yeah, okay. And I find it really interesting when you hear these things. And as mentioned before, you have shows like Lucifer. Uh, you even have uh, movies before, like the movie Bedazzled, specifically where you have these wishes that are given to Brendan Fraser by an attractive Satan figure and so forth. And because he does some sort of loving thing in the end, he ends up being saved. Guys, this is just something that is being pushed over and over again. And it's interesting this time that it's seemingly being done through cartoons. Cartoons have really been a Trojan horse for a lot of wickedness to be laughed at by families over and over again. And in fact, some shows that may not seem too bad have been used in order to bridge this gap. And I believe Satan knew all along what he would do, not necessarily that all the creators were trying to perform some wicked deed, but even a show like The Flintstones that many people watched growing up. And when we look back, The Flintstones were actually the first real television show that didn't have the one 
foot uh, marker in terms of needing a separation of a husband and wife in bed. No, just pay attention to that. That's husband and wife, by the way, on these shows. A one foot marker where they didn't want to have men and women bedding together right next to each other on film. So they usually would have this one foot where they would separate the husband and wife when they would show it. But the Flintstones were the first ones really that were watched on a daily basis that people were watching and they saw Fred and Wilma sleeping together in the same bed. Like, that doesn't seem like that much of a big deal, but now is there any show really on public television that doesn't have people sleeping with random women or just their friends or whatever it may be? And that is what happens, these little things. It was just Elvis shaking his hips, and now you have Lil Nas X literally giving Satan a lap dance. I mean, these all sound like they're not that big of a deal. They're, they're just, you guys are being legalistic. And next thing you know, when you see it happening, you go, oh, wait, it's too late. And I don't believe necessarily that there was something nefarious going on with Fred and Wilma. But even if you go to look at cartoons that were are now made for adults, the these popular genres that are now made for adults, the Flintstones were the ones that kind of bridged the gap where it wasn't just little children watching cartoons and everyone else watching their sitcoms, but the Flintstones could be watched by both parents and also their children. And then when we look down the line, we see over and over again shows that supposedly were for children like Ren and Stimpy, but they were dealing with a lot of boogers and gross stuff. And you go, well, isn't that for kids? Oh, that's no big deal. Or you look at shows specifically when we talk about Beavis and Butthead or The Simpsons, where Beavis and Butthead, when you look at it, are these two guys, somewhat teenagers with pimples, and all they do is talk about weird stuff, and that's cool, and that's not, while they're watching different music videos and headbanging. And it was like, oh, that's kind of for adults, so MTV can play it later at night. But the people watching Beavis and Butthead weren't typically parents. They were kids. And then you also had The Simpsons that came along, and... Obviously, the attitude in The Simpsons is their dad is Homer is just a really dumb guy. And of course, the mom is usually smarter. And of course, Lisa was smarter. And Bart was the rambunctious kid getting into trouble. And really, when you look at Simpsons, while there are aspects that have to do with children, a lot of times the jokes go right over the kid's head because ultimately they're for adults. And then you move on down the line to things like South Park and South Park being obscene using foul language and so forth, making fun of all sorts of religions and whatever it may be. But kids were the ones. I remember being in elementary school and my friends wearing Kenny t-shirts and so forth. And this was the bridged gap where fathers could sit down, pop up their favorite alcohol and sit with their kids as they both watch South Park. And then after that was none other than Family Guy made by an absolutely grotesque human being that has completely against the one true God, mocks Jesus over and over again in, in, in the show. And this is a show that I believe has been used by Satan through Seth MacFarlane in order to get people away from the one true God and towards whatever atheistic version of his viewpoints of life into the main square so people could watch this together. This is the common practice. This is what we see. And people thought, oh yeah, well, this is more for adults. It's on Fox once again. It's more for adults. But no, you see kids with their stewy shoes and you see dads watching it with their sons and moms and so forth and recording it and putting it on their VR. And when they're away at work, their kids watching it, even if they didn't want them to watch it. And and guys, I only say this because I have lived it. These were the shows that I used to watch as a kid. These were the, whether it was Beavis and Butthead or Ren and Stimpy, or whether it was right here, we're talking about the Simpsons. I had my Bart figures and so forth. And South Park, I had all that stuff, even went to the movies to see South Park when the movie came out. And Family Guy as well was one of my favorites until I came to know Jesus Christ. Until I came to know Jesus Christ. And I remember specifically with South Park, I remember a discussion I had with my family because they were very upset. And I'm not saying that this is the reaction that every believer should have, uh, but I, I don't have a problem if you do. 
But at my house, my family was not yet uh, knowing Christ and walking with him, but they would have Family Guy recorded on the TV, on the DVR there, and I would go in and delete all of them. Until one day I came home from work or school and I sat down for dinner with the family and I realized, wait a second, they have something to say because they're all being quiet and we're a pretty loud family at the dinner table. So when I realized that they had uh, wanted an intervention with me, so to speak, about their family guy getting deleted and my dad was the one who came forth with the plea to stop deleting family guy. And I said to him and I said, dad, you know, how would you feel if I said, I love this new show. You got to check it out. It's great. You're, you're going to love it. And then we start watching the show and all the jokes or a lot of the jokes on the show, I should say, are about you. In fact, they make fun of you. In fact, not only do they make fun of you, they say you have uh, maybe you're homosexual or even go as far to say you don't even exist. You're not even my real father. And I said, I just love this show, Dad. Isn't it so funny? Isn't it so entertaining? How many jokes would you be able to stomach sitting there next to me? How many jokes would you be able to stomach where it's just mocking you and making me question whether or not you're actually my father? That'd be pretty bad, right? Then how on earth could I watch that show knowing that that's exactly what it does to my Father in Heaven who I've come to know? It mocks Him. And it says, basically, He doesn't even exist. So I take it very seriously. Now, he didn't agree with me at that time, but I can tell you, praise God, now they do not watch Family Guy, and I know my dad absolutely loves Jesus. But nonetheless, this is a reality that we need to look at and say that these things are being programmed specifically into younger people, even if you want to say, oh, well, these are made for adults. Guys, they have the clicker to the streaming thing, and if that's actually happening in your house, I, I'm telling you, you need to watch out for those things. If they're just you know, clicking away at whatever or watching whatever they want on YouTube, be careful. Their minds can be corrupted. And the Bible is very clear. We should set no, as the psalmist did. He set no wicked thing before his eyes, according to Psalm 101, verse 3. And that needs to be us, and it especially needs to be us, in watching out for our own children that they don't follow in those steps and begin to watch those things. And I honestly begin to have a heart turned away from the one true God. We do not want that sort of nonsense. And what's interesting is this show, as we've been talking about the history of these cartoons being just absolutely wicked, this show uh, has three co-creators, but it also has an executive producer by the name of Dan Harmon, and he has been very popular making what many people believe is the number one adult cartoon show maybe ever made. It's listed as such on number one in Rick and Morty. And when it comes to that show, he has a nihilistic viewpoint of life, and that comes out in the characters. But then when we look at Dan Harmon as an individual, I found something very, very interesting, and a much more interesting. It is disturbing when we look back at Dan Harmon and some of the stuff that he was making and thinking that it is funny. In fact, we can't even show the full clip, but we will show some parts of it, of something that he released back in 2009 because it is so grotesque and it's so disgusting that no one should be forced to watch such a thing. But he thought it was funny, and when people brought this out to say how wicked it was, instead of actually pointing out, this is wicked, this guy, what is wrong with you? And the fact that it was secret in terms of people watched this at a festival and it didn't get out for a number of years about how wicked it was. Guys, this is just absolutely disgusting. And instead of being re repudiating him for the things that he has made and thinking that they were funny, let alone if that comes out in film where they're recording it, let alone whatever's in that sicko's mind, guys, we need to look at this. And instead of saying, well, this is just some QAnon conspiracy, because the article that I'll read from, actually, that's the case that it makes. We need to repudiate it to see how disgusting it truly is. And this was from his sketch comedy, and this is, quote, the article says, Cancel Rick and Morty, gain steam, after 2009, Dan Harmon doll rape video resurfaces. Harmon apologized for the video two years ago, but now the clip is resurfacing with hashtags used by followers of the right-wing conspiracy theory, QAnon. Now, 
let's just point this out. I have a lot of problems with QAnon. I think that uh, whoever is behind it, uh, they're either nefarious themselves or whoever is using them or whatever is using them is quite nefarious as well. But nonetheless, to make to find out about this clip as a journalist and to make that your problem, I mean, just I, I, my, my head wants to explode to think that you watch this clip as a journalist. And after watching this clip, we need to get after those QAnon honors. Sometimes I don't know when you're kidding. I mean, are you serious? <sighs> the video, a parody of Dexter called Daryl, premiered in 2009 at the Channel 101 Comedy Festival. I'm really wondering who on earth was watching this. It features Harmon's character climbing through a window, pulling down his pants. It says rubbing his genitals. I'm sorry to even say that, but that's not even what actually happens in the video on a baby doll lying on a couch. Harmon appears on camera at the start of the video, warning viewers the following footage is controversial. The video resurfaced in 2018 and caused backlash against Harmon on social media, leading him to delete his Twitter account. He said this at the time, quote, In 2009, I made a pilot which strove to parody the series Dexter and only succeeded in offending I quickly realized the content was way too distasteful and took the video down immediately. Nobody should ever have to see what you saw. And for that, I sincerely apologize. Guys, this dude literally not only recorded himself, filmed it, edited it, but showed it to a festival and then tries to say, oh, I'm sorry that you had to see this. This is disgusting. This is grotesque. And to write articles that seemingly defend him as, well, he already said sorry for this, so let's keep watching his movies. Guys, these are sick people. We need to recognize it. We need to see it. We need to also say these people need Jesus Christ. And the reason why Little Demon and these shows are being made is because, as they, as the co-producer said, they're going to push it until someone tells them to stop. And for you, I'm encouraging you, this is a great place to say, stop. This is a great place as a person who has a child or just as you, a follower of Jesus Christ, to say, I'm not allowing this stuff within a hundred yards of my house. I don't want anything to do with this because the Bible specifically tells us to stay away from these things. And when people think, well, this is just fun. This is just goofing around. This will be really funny, frontal full frontal nudity of cartoon characters. I mean, and if you think that can't be pornography, if you guys, for so many uh, that may not know, there is an entire version of pornography that is only pictures, only um, animation. In fact, it comes from a branch from anime called hentai. I don't know if it's a branch, but it makes those kind of uh, disgusting pornographic films in almost like a version of anime, just grotesque. But here's what the Bible tells us. What, well, what should we do? Not only should we stay away from it, but here are some blessings that the Bible says of staying away from those things. Psalm 97 verse 10 says, Hate evil, you who love the Lord, who watches over the souls of his godly ones. He saves them from the hand of the wicked. Light is sown like seed for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Be joyful in the Lord, you righteous one, and praise the mention of his holy name. Guys, be in worship. Put things before your eyes that are not wicked. I love that. Light is sown like seed for the righteous. That's what we want to sow. We want to sow seeds not of corruption, not of wickedness, but seeds of light. Seeds of, guess what? Guys, fruits of the Holy Spirit that will be bore out when you're sowing seeds of light. Not a false light, but truly the light of the Lord. Truly Jesus. This is how Psalm 34, starting at verse 8, states it. Taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for to those who fear him, there is no lack of anything. The young lions do without and suffer hunger, but they who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is the person who desires life? 
and loves the length of days that he may see good, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from deceit. And now check this verse out. Verse 14, turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Guys, it is so important that we turn from evil that as it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 9, abhor that which is evil, cling to that which is good. And it's interesting because before it says that, it describes right before that, love without hypocrisy. Hate or abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. As it says right here in verse 14, turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. That's what we need to be doing seeking the peace that is only found in Jesus Christ. We need to seek peace. Verse 15, the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears are toward their cry for help. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to eliminate the memory of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Isaiah 57 Verse 15 has always been a favorite verse of mine because it not only deals with the fact that God dwells in a high and holy place, but he also dwells with the lowly and the contrite at heart to lift them up and to rescue them. The Lord wants to rescue us from all of the peril that is going to come upon the earth. The truth is, is that the Bible is true and the realities that Jesus said were going to happen. There will be a great falling away. The real Antichrist will be revealed. But ultimately, I have to make sure that I do not lose heart. I have to make sure that as a blood-bought believer, that when we see lawlessness increasing, that my heart does not wax cold. That doesn't mean that I no longer blush when sin is around. It doesn't mean that I no longer point it out and say, that is wicked and abhorrent and disgusting. And I don't just throw up my hands, well, that's just the wicked world. It should be this way. That's not how it works. Remember, when Isaiah was there in Isaiah 5 and then in Isaiah chapter 6, you have the woes that he cries out, and then it's, woe is me, I am undone. But one of the things that happens to him is that God takes him and shows him these abominations. And then he shows them greater abominations. And then he shows them greater abominations. And ultimately, when it comes to Isaiah, the here I am, send me, is what we need to be like. We need to say, Lord, when all this wickedness, and we're putting this generation of wickedness all around us, here I am, Lord, send me. Keep me holy. Keep me set apart for your work so that I can go out and preach the gospel. And I want to encourage you guys, last thing, and I hope I don't go too long, that Josh has to edit this too much. Oh, brother. Guys, this is your last chance. We'll be heading out next week to Pennsylvania for our youth retreat. And the the entire theme of the retreat is called In All Love and Discernment because you need to have all love and all true knowledge and in real discernment. And we do those things together. I don't want to give away my message, but one of my messages is going to encompass that. And I'm excited for that retreat. And if you can send your child out there, maybe you're on the anywhere on the East Coast and you can get there a lot easier than some of the people on the West Coast, we would love to have you there. Just check out the link in the description. Josh will put it up there. It's not too late. You can still sign up, but sign up as quick as possible because we are almost completely filled up. So we want to thank you guys. And I thank you guys for joining us. When you see all this wickedness happening around you, just cling to Jesus, seek him, and guess what? There is a peace that surpasses all understanding that only comes through knowing Christ and loving him. God bless you guys. This has been Chad Davidson, and this is the 511 News.